Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new JLPI presentation. To those who do, don't know me, know me, I'm Alexandre Delaunay, and I'm in charge of the JLP, JLPI development team and the project owner for JLPI. We'll talk today about roadmap and some features we want in JLPI for the next major version. But to keep this presentation short, we'll discuss only about major topics or very graphical ones. And um, I would like to insist on the fact there is no promise. We'll try your best to add these features, but in function of how the year will pass, some will be okay, others not. So for the first one and the big objective, at the moment, we have in our marketplace two plugins to address genericity, generic objects and fields plugins. We want to add the possibility to let you customize each type of objects displayed in the asset menu at first. The first part of that is to let you define your types, and we will provide a list of predefined types matching the current asset list and let you add new ones if you want, like servers in addition of desktop or laptop computers, or maybe to do something completely different of IT management, like car, desks, etc. Some of the current types will still be not removable, like software, racks, cable, etc. The reason is their behavior or their presentation differ greatly from other assets. You will still be able to disable these if you want, but deletion will be impossible. So, genericity covers the creation of new asset types. In addition, in the same setup page, you will be able to define which capacity an asset type use, like contract, management, etc. Composition of an asset type with some checkboxes to select capacities. You can think this permit to remove or add tabs to the object, or if an object can be inventoried by an agent. So let's talk a little about features related to the GLPI inventory agent. Before talking about roadmap, let's do a quick reminder about remote inventory feature. This is a task you can set up for an agent to let it query over computers on your network to construct an inventory file for each. The single agent will aggregate all inventory files and send them in one pass to the inventory API of GLPI. So, the main purpose is to have only one deployed agent. We use SSH and WinRM protocol to achieve that. So the first point we want, we want to improve is to ease the inventory process of your network. We currently have two tasks, discovery, which ping addresses in, a, in an IP range, network inventory, which takes the result of the discovery to do a full SNMP inventory for network equipments and printers. We'll change the process by adding the remote inventory task of computer and let discovery task directly do doing a full inventory. If it knows the type of the remote device, SNMP query for network equipment, SSH or WinRM queries for computer. With one unified task and one setup, we aim to let you discover all your network devices. The two last bullet points describe, describe things required by the unified discovery. The new toolbox UI will receive, will receive forms to plan tasks for the agent and to save credentials like SNMP community login password couple for Windows domain or public public key for a SSH connection. In summary, any information to let the agent connect to a remote device. In more long term, we think about rewrite large part of the agent, and we shortlisted Golang for that. The fact is the agent is written with the language, language pearl, and recently finding developers comfortable with this language has been hard. So we'll try a prototype within the year to measure our capacity to switch to this new language. We plan also to enforce exchange between agents and backend by adding authentication or registration flows. This will be recommended, but you will be able to do simple exchange if you prefer. And we still need to redo all forms to drive remotely the agent GLPI UI. 
This is still planned. For GLPL part, let's talk about feature related to the web application. Firstly, we will add a new GLPI API again. We make the observation that despite the old one permits more in terms of usage, due to its low level connection with the framework, it's hard to maintain its stability and avoid regressions. We maintain an interface to address depreciation for this previous API, but it's getting harder and harder to do so. A new API connecting more high level with stabilized endpoints and parameters. And we took advantage to add some comfort features. As you can see, we have a dedicated UI based on Swagger to ease discovering and testing endpoints and their parameters. We also use RSQL, a common query language for filtering APIs. And for this second slide, you can see in action a GET request to list user in GLPI database. We, we also want to extend data center features in the next version, mainly about adding graphical views. The first and simpler one is graphical panels for network ports, list in equipment, equipment forms. We will take the front and rear pictures defined in the model of the equipment and display them above the port list. So user will get information about each port directly on the picture panel by ordering them. And a single click on a port will scroll the page to the good line to get more information. In the page where you can set up the model, you will have a new tab to draw each port position. In the same way, slots of an enclosure can be drawn and indexed to indicate to GLPI where Sabiton can be placed. And so, on a reg view where an enclosure is inserted, instead of a single blank rectangle, slots will be displayed and usual control available, like hovering or clicking to get more information. Finally, for DCIM part, we'll try to have some representation for network or power connection. The goal is to get links between equipments. This is very early to talk about this, but we currently have short specification for this, and it requires more research to find a good library, for example, to link the equipment. Keep in mind the current screen screenshot doesn't represent any existing development. We are very, very early about uh, this feature. Let's explore some various topics. We have a functional prototype for this. A new view to let GLPI administrators set up their business processes with steps, transition, condition, and actions, a full toolkit to describe a full workflow. This aims to replace legacy rules. And for the start, it will be available for assistant subjects like ticket or change. But we aim to extend to every object in GLPI. Another development currently in alpha is a connector to Newtonix API to get clusters, host, virtual machine, and disk. This model parses the distant API of Newtonix and sends them to the native inventory API of GLPI. The merge with existing device is done with the rule engine as usual. Another connector, GLPI will serve as a SCIM endpoint for your Microsoft Azure instance. This protocol push, push changes of user from the directory to, to connected applications. So instead of syncing the world user database and matching everyone like down in a LDAP connection, for example, any change in the distant directory will be immediately pushed to GLPI. So more is to set up and more fresh database of your users. Let's talk about security features. The first one, the two-factor authentication. Administrators will be able to enforce user login in the security setup to ask 
then to register an external application like Google Authenticator or OT, for example. There are many for this. And after a successful login, a new field will appear asking the user to paste a, a PIN code from the authentication application. And if it fails, uh, an error message will be will appear. And uh, on a success, GLPI will be connected. We will have an, an OAuth server to GLPI for two purposes. Connect application to GLPI to delegate the login feature on identity management. So it differs from the client OAuth we already have to achieve SSO on GLPI. In this, in this context, it's GLPI who will do um, uh, SSO for our application. And the second purpose is to secure our several API like inventory one and or the general purpose one. And then some various points. In management menu, a new entry to list vulnerabilities. The goal is with the help of, with the help of external scanners like Vuls or Tsunami, as well as, as some API to get CVs and match them to no softwares to see if an, if an host has some security vulnerabilities. Some dashboard cards and alerts will be also added to enhance reporting about the sub subject. A last slide to let you know we continue to work on improving the core of GLPI. So the most impactful for you will be the move of the web root of the application. Now it will be a subfolder named public. Thereby, all of our subfolders, like the files, for example, will not be available on the web when the web server is not well set up. The next point are mainly legacy code base we need to clean. And to finish, we move to a new charting library called eCharts. It's simpler to use on our side, and you probably appreciate the new colors on its interactivity. At the moment, we're still working actively on bug fixing the 10 version. So this last brought big changes, especially on the assistant path. But we aim to work on the, the incoming yearly fully on the new version. And so rendezvous later in 2023 for more precision and advancement. And thank you for watching.